All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have, is it JP? Yep, it's JP Slave. With me right now, who's our driving instructor, who's Head to the right. showing Let's me go. the line through these. And back to the left, just a little less straight right there. whoop de doos And um, I have to say, I've been lucky enough to drive every Range Rover product off-road. That includes the Evoque, the Range Rover, now the Range Rover Sport, and of course the LR4. And it's amazing, JP, just how much technology and air suspension can make these cars do things that 99% that of the people who buy them will never use them for. I, it's come a long way since 1969. There's a, there's, a, there's a new button here called Auto, right? Uh, yep, and what that does for us is uh, it takes the guesswork out of it for your average individual who's never been off-roading before. Responses. We have uh, grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand mode, and rock crawl mode. Uh, right now we are in the auto terrain response mode. And if we go to the screen here, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to see auto terrain response selected. When we come to a stop the next time, we can press this information button and we'll get a little you see how it says optimizing? Yes, so, so it's, that, that it's reading the terrain and, and yep, doing... Through all those, the environmental uh, inputs into the vehicle, whether it's wheel articulation, wheel speed, uh, whether you're on an incline or a decline, it, it's picking up on all these uh, uh, senses, as you were, and... Uh, picking the best possible traction, getting the yep. power. Now, we've got the supercharged... V8, which puts out 510 horsepower, and we really need only about 50 of that right now, <laughs> right? If, if that. If because, that, uh, yeah, because we're just kind of... We're just going to be basically a, a medium walking speed. That way we really allow the suspension to fulfill its design function. Now, one of the options that this car does have is the optional rear locking differential. There's a center locking differential. Yep, and again, we can see how that... Uh, center and rear differential are engaging uh, and disengaging when it, when it needs it yeah. yeah yeah so it is quite amazing that you can take a vehicle that weighs 5,000 pounds and less 5,000 uh, this one's 5,000 we checked yeah 5,037 very good thank you as I recall you're right and you know make it crawl up these very steep and you know on video it's hard to show how something is steep, but these are very steep hills, and I should know because I'm covered in dirt because I just went tumbling down one. Well, what, what goes down <laughs> must go back up at some point. So <laughs> and it, and it, it is amazing what this can do. Having having said that, um, this is you know relatively, I would say on a scale of one to ten, this is probably a five in terms of how how rough off road can get. Right, there's no boulders, there are no drop offs, there's no water, which makes things mud, which makes things muddy and slippery. Um, so the car is doing a lot of the work, but then again, you could get a lot rougher, and I'm sure you've been in a lot worse. Yeah. Now with the air suspension, it does get up to just under 11 inches. I believe it's 10.9 inches of we'll ground clearance. It. Yeah, which is uh, which is phenomenal uh, for a vehicle that's going to be going down the expensive boulevards of Hollywood most of its life. Well. Then as soon as we went into low range, I don't know if you noticed, but it raised the vehicle up into its highest mode and it's off road. So that maximizes the angle of approach and departure. It's those two angles combined that determine what kind of slope you can go up or come down without making a trip to the parts department to try and get a view on the new bumper. Now if you were in a defender, obviously you'd have a lot of underbody cladding. Does this have underbody cladding? Uh, there, there are some... Um, the important bits? The important bits have some protection under there. But it's not like a Jeep Rubicon, right? No. Where you've got complete it's not skid ar plates, it's not ar armored, yeah. 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 Which is fine because we're mostly in loose dirt, so we're not, I don't think, in danger of tearing anything out of the bottom of this, even if we do hit some of these uh, little whoop de doos so you've been doing this for your whole life, haven't you? Yep. And, yep. and 
you've seen a lot of changes. Well, in 1969, my, my dad and uh, an associate of his, they took the original two Range Rovers from the factory, the first two ever built by hand, yes. out to the Sahara Desert to do hot water testing. Uh, there's actually a, I think if you do a search on YouTube, it's called Sahara South. And it, it's quite the uh, little time capsule. Uh, it's, uh, the end of the 60s there it was a different uh, different era. Era. I can really feel the magic going on underneath me. You know, I, I can feel it really working hard to find where the traction is. Well, when you look at this, uh, our 4x4 info screen down yes. here, you can see at times you'll see uh, the little orange rectangle there below the wheel. That, that's when that wheel is fully drooped or dropped. Here, you got to show that. I can't show it. Here, so I'm driving, so you go ahead and show that. There you go. Don't put your hand on the... On the there you go, like that. Thank you very much. Okay, so now now you can see the, the suspension at work. Yep. And here's the center differential lock, rear differential lock. And remembering, it's kind of like a clutch pack of five discs, or a clutch of five... I, I, I can screw that up. That's right, Don't worry. <laughs> it's, like, you can edit it. it's like a clutch. I, I'm editing on the on the move. It, it's like a five clutches in a pack. And if you did imagine a tuning fork on the back of that clutch pack, it's infinitely variable. And in each of these terrain response settings, we can alter the uh, rate at which those diffs are applied according to the terrain. So there are, I believe, four. Land Rover slash Range Rover schools in North America, right? There's there's uh, one in uh, Montebello in Canada, Canada and then three in three in the U.S. Three state. in the U.S. There's, there's one. And you take uh, people out in these things, and you, you you teach them how to do this kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Now, do I have hill descent control engaged? Yes, you okay, do. You so can see again on this little screen here, yeah. the, the green. It's also duplicated. All the information is duplicated. So now yeah. we got this very steep hill. Uh, let's go to first gear. Okay, so how do you go to first? Uh, click it over to the left. Click it over and go down? Yeah. Go no, forward. Forward is down. Yeah, so that's now first gear. Okay, so now it's going to do all the braking for me because this is a yeah. pretty steep hill. The hair to the right, just the hair. That's more than the hair. Sorry. The hair back to the left. There we go. Hair is a hair. Yes, yeah, sorry. Very fractional. I have thick hair. <laughs> 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 Nobody was hurt in that moment of drama. <laughs> no ninety-three thousand dollar Range Rover was scratched. So, in case you're worried. The good thing is we've got the cameras going, so if we do roll it off this hill, we'll have good video. And that'll be a really good YouTube video, by the way. Yeah. That'll be more interesting than us crawling along. Uh, we'll see if we're talking about airbags on the way down. That's right. We'll see how they so. deploy. I'm, I'm going to two now to give us a little bit more speed because it's a little bit easier. So let me ask you this. Why do you think that Range Rover continues to make these cars so off-road capable? Because obviously, most people aren't going to do this in the Range Rover. Well, then that's part of our heritage. Mm. It's a... Uh, and Land Rover is one of the only car manufacturers or vehicle manufacturers that's only ever built 4x4s. And, yeah, and Jeep. And Jeep. Yeah. So it's part of the DNA of the brand. Well, they, they, they make two-wheel drive vehicles. They do, yeah. So yeah. That, that we can, uh, you can get them off. You can check them off. Jeep, are you listening? Stop making those two-wheel drive vehicles if you want to compete with these guys. you got to stay with the 4x4s. So, like I said, I've been fortunate enough to drive every uh, model in the entire lineup off-road and I, I'm always amazed at how capable these are but having said that um, and I'm gonna be completely honest there's just nothing that beats having traditional lockers having you know a much higher uh, approach and departure angle having the kind of stuff that's old-school 4x4 versus all this technology now this technology is wonderful it's magical it's amazing what this vehicle will do a 5,000 pound vehicle that's climbing up these hills but at the same time I'm extremely nervous driving this through here because I know that I have a $93,000 vehicle and that if I take a step wrong, I'm going to do some very expensive damage. And that's where I'm a little concerned because obviously people aren't going to do this, but when you do do it, you feel like you're, oh, I don't know, you know, you like you got this beautiful car that is pristine and chances are if you rub a tree with it or if you rub a rock with it you're doing some serious damage to it and that's where I have a hard time with it I just I just feel like it doesn't belong out here even though it can be out here does that make sense well, really you're talking about a breadth of capability there. all right gang it's hard to show how steep something is when you're using a video camera but 
this is crazy steep because look, I just took a massive tumble just trying to walk up this hill that the Range Rover had no issues going up or down on. Let me show you. That's the hill below me right there. Let me spin it up. And that's the hill above me. Now I know that doesn't look steep, but trust me, it's steep and I'm dirty and I'm uh, luckily uninjured and I'm having fun. So yeah, I'm impressed by this new Range Rover Sport. America. God bless it, America. And you know what? America as well, because 75% of the tundra is made in America, in Texas to be more specific. But you may be wondering, where's the Chevy? Well, we're still waiting for GM to provide us with one that can be tested. So Chevy, call me, call me. We've got two American trucks and a half, and we're still waiting.